Alrighty folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and inside of this bag is my Radmax shielding. Can't see it very well, and then behind there is a uranium glass plate. Um, the Radmax shielding is only a few millimeters of lead, so it's not very thick. And I'm testing it right this moment. 14 is about the average background count in this room. So I'm a couple of counts per minute still over, and that's coming from the glass. The glass is putting off alpha, which is 100% stopped by this lead, but um, it's additionally putting off gamma, which is making it through. And the readings fluctuate, and over time there are 14 counts per minute, so you'll see them go up and down a little bit. I would say that this lead is basically stopping this plate from getting through. Now, let's see what happens when I remove the... Oops, let me push that back. I pushed the... Um, Geiger counter away from the source and distance makes a difference here. So let's make sure the two are... It's really hard to hold this lead. It's kind of heavy. Okay, let's make sure they're even. Boom. I want to get the window of the Geiger counter, which is right about here, lined up with that plate. There. Okay, but you get the point. 15, 16... about as good of a job as we can of getting the two separated now. Now let's see what happens. Are we really getting any good results from the lead? This is mostly alpha radiation, so you're not going to get a lot from a distance anyway. But as you can see, immediately it went up. And it takes a moment for the tube to saturate and start building up a good tick. But as you can see, it's working. Now, the guy, my Geiger counter has to calculate because it, it hasn't actually had a minute to determine how many counts in a minute it will get. So it's kind of like auto averaging is the best way to put it. It's approximating what it's going to get. So it takes it a minute for that number to get up. It's kind of it's similar to the old dials, how the dials used to slowly, slowly rise up. Well, actually, there are two different phenomena on it totally, but as far as the average person who's looking at them is concerned, they behave very similarly. And as you know, this is nowhere near the thousand count object I had yesterday. See? Far from 14 counts per minute. Now I have the Radmax shielding, as you can see this is working, wrapped up in this. And the reason I have it wrapped up inside of this is because it is lead. Believe it or not, did you know that lead is more toxic to the human body and causes more damage than most of these radioactive sources? Yes, that's true. Now I mean, if I had a that's something really, really radioactive in here. Like I had, you know, a, cure, a, a full, a full carry of, uh, you know, cesium-137 to sit in here, like a big, big gigantic mega check source to sit right here. Yeah, that would be more deadly to me than lead. I could lick lead powder and snort it up my nose, and it probably wouldn't be as bad for me as if I had a humongous, gigantic chunk of cesium-137 or strontium-90 or you know something weird, actinum or something. But but most when it comes to these low-level radioactive sources, like this little dish right here. Having the lead, touching the lead is significantly more dangerous. Let me put this back in place carefully because I don't want to disturb the way these guys are laid out. They're still wobbling a little bit, which is kind of a problem. But you notice that stopped. I mean, it still ticks some because I'm getting background, and some of the some of the gamma still makes it through. But that's going to fall in a minute. It's still auto averaging, so when it picks up ticks, it doesn't understand that they're not going to be as high over time. That's going to fall in a moment. So that is way too high for the number of ticks we're getting. There it goes. The auto averaging's kicking in and saying, wait a minute, that's not enough ticks to support 30 counts per minute. That's way, way lower. 22, see? I am happy with my Radmax. I'm going to get more Radmax because this Radmax stuff is pretty cheap. You don't pay very much for the lead, which you pay almost the equal amount for shipping. But think about why. It makes perfect sense. What you're paying for with shipping is uh, the weight. It's really, really heavy. Now, an important thing to do when you buy something like a lead shielding is buy gloves. I got these Wegmans Large Gloves. They're pretty good. Yay, Wegmans Large Gloves. Here's a Wegmans glove right here. The reason it's important to get large gloves is because when you're playing around with this sort of stuff, you need to be able to get your hands in and out of them without having other gloves or other things. It's, it's difficult to get gloves on to begin with. There. It's easier to do it if they're large. Just trust me on that. And they are, it actually offers some protection against the radiation. Like Alpha, for example, would be stopped more or less by these gloves, most likely. And they have a lot of carbon in them, for example, and carbon has a low Z score. It uh, has very, very few protons in it. 
and as a result of it, it's also pretty decent at stopping a beta without causing secondary ionization, Bromsterlung, which of course comes when you try to stop beta with um, something heavy like with lead, which is a problem. Which leads me, by the way, to believe that there's a possibility to that my other glass plate that I always thought was uranium glass, because I know this for, for a fact is, I'm starting to think maybe it's not uranium glass, and the reason I'm starting to think it is because I, I'm going to have to test this, but my god, it seems like my, re my readings are actually getting higher when I'm around the lead with it. The only way that would be the case is if it were a very, 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 very good Bromster lung effect, meaning the beta uh, emissions are coming out and causing secondary ionization inside the lead. But we're going to discover whether that's true in the next couple days as I test. But for right this moment, and by the way, yes, I have a black light on this thing. That's why it looks so nice. For right this moment, though, as you can see, the lead works. I have the lead inside the bag. It bends nicely. And I'm going to go outside and I'm going to make a storage container for this guy here to see whether or not I can completely isolate it from background radiation. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com. And by the way, I bought my, lead, my, Red Mac, my Radmax shielding at unitednuclear.com. And you can look for that in my comments. Um, I bought three feet of it. Three, three, three feet of it. And then I just folded it over like this. And I would like to warn you, do not buy this for shielding from beta sources. If you're going to shield from beta sources, you can still use this, but make sure you use something like aluminum or carbon or something with a really, really, really low atomic number for uh, um, uh, shielding it. You do not want to use high atomic numbers like lead or, or even even heavy, even even something like steel, which isn't really that high. You do not want to use those because they can actually create more radiation than if you didn't use them, which is kind of creepy but true. All right. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Bye-bye.